film's about a guy working in advertising who is disillusioned with his life and meeting a crazy, beautiful French woman, he um, agrees to go on what becomes a bizarre camping expedition to a forest in France with her and there his life changes. And you said this is based on your life, so... It's based on, on a true story. I met a, a beautiful, crazy French girl uh, <laughs> a few years ago and she she took me to a forest in France, in the France, a forest called Brossard and she told me all about the legends of the place and, uh, and the history behind it and as I was hiking up through the forest at midnight with a tent on my back um, towards this mystical lake of no return the last winter and I thought this, this would be an interesting idea for a film and uh, I started thinking about it and then a year later I actually sat down and wrote it and uh, mentioned it to Paul um, and to midway through him mentioning it I said that's a film and he said well, actually, I've written a screenplay. <laughs> and, that, and Paul read it exactly two years or three years to the day that I first met this girl in the same place. In Cannes, actually. In Cannes Film Festival. And then we went back to, to the same forest to shoot the film exactly two years after the events happened. That's so we went back to the same lake, the same forest, the same village and everything. Wow. So we recreated the story. <laughs> so, Mark, how did you get involved in the project then? Um, well, I've known Paul for 16 years, and uh, and we, um, well, I did my first film with Paul, which is called Boston Kick Out, and uh, which we shot in Stevenage, and we sort of been friends ever since. Um, um, I mean, very basically, whatever Paul's doing, he just gives me a partner, <laughs> and um, he, you know, he just says I'm doing, I've got a film, do you want to be in it? And I say yeah. And, and I've either read it or not read it, and we turn up and we just do it. So, so I don't know if I actually had read it because I saw it the other day, um, didn't I? The, the, you saw it finally. Yes. We did a little private screening, and um, and I thought it was uh, I thought it was fantastic. It really, uh, I mean, it's a real surprise. <laughs> he, 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 well, he, he was actually speechless. About half an hour afterwards, he was speechless. Because you made it for 45,000, didn't you? I mean, it's I, a cheap it just, I, I just thought, this is really, really beautiful. And it put Johnny in a whole new light to me. I mean, it's so, and it, you know, I mean, it, it, like, I think like all of us, we struggle between being, you know, really fucking crazy, and also trying to find a spiritual uh, thing within us, and and this is a film that captured all of that. So I, I think, in a way, it captures all of our lives, the kind of the the yin and the yang. You know, the, the I, I always think like the Buddhist and the hedonist within us, and, uh, and this is a, like a sort of perfect synergy of all that. Yeah, in that respect, it's very different from um, English films in general. You know. Not being a genre film, not being a gangster film, not being a horror film, not being a period film, a spiritual film, an English spiritual film, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can't think of another one. Can you? Uh, not the top of my head. <laughs> with an amazing actress. Uh, <laughs> Julie Yeah, we were very, very fortunate. She, she came into the audition room and she was the first one in. And she just well, the negative to... thing about that is the first, she was the first one in, she was brilliant, and we had to see another 44 afterwards. But there was a, a moment, I, I deliberately chose two scenes that would be quite challenging, because it's a French actress, and so therefore she needs to be able to um, work the, like, the English language, and also it's a very emotional character. And uh, at one point she got so wound up, she picked up this bottle of water and threw it across the table towards me, and it bounced off the table and hit me between the eyes. And she had no idea I was going to play the part, she just thought I was reading opposite her. And the moment it struck me between the eyes, I thought, oh, she's the one. <laughs> she understands the character, wow. and the feistiness of the character. Um, what do you hope that the audience will take away when you finish the film? Well, there's lots of messages in the film, you know, but also, in addition to, you know, absolute a priori messages, there are, you know, questions that need or don't need to be answered. So, you know, to actually pin it down and and to give you a definitive answer to that would be running contra to the uh, to the film to, a, to an extent. The second film festival it went to was uh, the Indie Spirit Film Festival in Colorado, and it was actually the first festival I attended because I couldn't go to the first one. And um, I, you know, I really didn't know how the film would play with an audience. And uh, you know, many amazing things happened at that festival, but one of which was. Um, the guy saw the film and he was so profoundly moved by the film that afterwards he went and walked around the town for two hours, sat in the park for another two hours thinking about his life and then decided to quit his job and get on a plane to Africa.
<laughs> all as a consequence of the film. I mean, that is like, as a volunteer work. God, it might. What does the Rain Dance Festival mean to all of you professionally and personally? For me, it's, uh, it's, it's, it means a lot because I actually went to the, um, the two day film school years ago and uh, it was one of my first introductions to film production. And, uh, so, so Rain Dance has been a part of me for a long time and I, I used to come to the film festival uh, to watch films, I used to come as a film critic for, for the radio station I was working at the time. So for me, for us to be having the UK premiere as part of the Rain Dance Film Festival is a very, very special thing.